What's going on, everybody? It is March 31st, and we have a crappy Saturday slate of basketball for you. Uh, while baseball is filled to the brim, uh, we've got five games in the NBA tonight. Only three games on the main slate. Uh, Celtics Raptors game doesn't have a line yet. Um, lots of weird crap to look at, but you know, I'm not going to stop doing basketball videos. What would be the point of that? It's way too much fun. So first game up, we have Wizards and Hornets. Uh, Wizards with the 112.5 implied total, which is first on the entire slate. Uh, five and a half point favorites at home against the Hornets. Uh, expectation is that John Wall could see about 25 minutes tonight. Uh, his FanDuel price has been corrected, so he's now at 8,500, which makes Wall unplayable. Um, I think that you can take a look at Bradley Beal, 7,600 on FanDuel, 7,900 on DK. Um, not a great matchup. Hornets are decent on D, but uh, I think that Beal might look a little bit better if he gets a little bit of Wall to play off of. Um, I'd have no problem going with some Beal. Uh, Otto Porter should play tonight. I've got him in for 32 minutes. He's at 7,200 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. Um, I'd be fine with it. Uh, nothing's grading out on the Wizards as anything sort of expect, expectate. What word am I looking for? Exceptional. That's the word I'm looking for. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get words from my brain piece out the mouth. Um, Beal Porter Morris are the only guys that I'm looking at is basically the easiest way to say this. And I don't think that anybody, if you're playing like the full slate or just the early slate, you know, I'm not going crazy over anybody here. Uh, no absolute values. For the Hornets, um, 107 implied total, which is fifth. Uh, slowly getting to the point where they have nothing to play for at all. Although I think they've been at that point for a couple weeks. Just nobody told the Hornets that. Uh, Kemba at 8,600, 85 on DK. Um, I don't see the high-end ability for him tonight. Uh, he's relatively safe, but I don't think that he's priced out in a way that I would be super interested. Uh, I sort of feel the same way about Dwight Howard. Um, Wizards have been really good limiting centers all year. I don't expect today to be much different. If I needed a value play, you know, you could always look at MKG and GPPs. Um, I don't really have a ton of interest in Batum. I'm not sure the minutes are there at that current price. And then I guess you can probably have a little bit of a look at Marvin Williams, 4,400 on FanDuel, 4,200 on DK. Um, regularly in the 20s, you know, had a 31-point game on March uh, 22nd you can get to Marvin Williams as a, a power forward filler today, and I'd be cool with it. Just not a lot to like in these Wizards Hornets games. Not a lot to like in general. This is going to be uh, interesting. But we do have the Knicks. Knicks are hosting the Pistons. Uh, the Knicks are three and a half point underdogs at home. Um, they have the eighth highest implied total. And uh, for the Knicks, it is we're unlikely to see Enos Cantor tonight. He is doubtful. So does open things up a little bit. We can look at Tim Hardaway, who's only 6,000 on FanDuel. Um, he's obviously a very boom-bust guy. You don't want to take him in a cash game, but I think that Hardaway would be a really nice GPP play, particularly on FanDuel, where he's priced dramatically better um, than he is on DraftKings. Uh, I think Beasley looks good. It looks like he could get a couple extra shots that would normally go to Cantor. Um, 7000 on FanDuel is not the best price for him, but he's exceeded value at that price for his past two games. So maybe ride a little bit of momentum from Beasley. Uh, Trey Burke looks great at 6000 6200 on DK. Um, went for 29 in his last game, went for 62 that game before. Uh, he's been right around that 30 mark. I think that uh, Burke is relatively safe in a cash scenario. Uh, Pistons haven't been anything to write home about for point guard D. Uh, you can take a look at the Unicornet, um, 3,600 on both sites. Uh, if you want to roll out a sort of punt play, um, Cornette should get some extra minutes with Cantor out. Um, O'Quinn obviously looks amazing. Uh, 4,400 on DK for O'Quinn is a no-brainer as long as we know that he's going to be in the game. 
Um, so if they confirm that Kyle O'Quinn is starting, he's one of the he's sort of a must play, um, particularly on DraftKings, and he looks amazing on FanDuel as well. But 4,400 on DK is an exceptional price for a guy that's already hyper efficient on a minutes basis. Um, I'd be all over it. Now for the Pistons, where we will not be seeing Blake Griffin for a while, I would imagine the rest of the season. No sense in bringing him back for anything, but we'll see. Um, Drummond at 9,900 on FanDuel, 10-1 on DK. Um, it's a tough matchup, but you know if you're only getting 24 minutes of Kyle O'Quinn and the rest of it's going to Isaiah Hicks or Luke Cornett, Drummond should eat. Um, he went for 59.6 without uh, Blake two nights ago. Um, I would expect a similar sort of output from Drummond in a game like this. If he wants to, you know, he can have a an absolute monster performance. Uh, I like him a lot at center. Um, other guys that I'd be focusing on, probably Stanley Johnson and Reggie Jackson. Uh, you know, mid-tier guys that are going to be getting some extra minutes. Uh, Reggie Jackson, 5,300 on FanDuel, 5,500 on DK. Uh, I'd be willing to go down that route. Uh, Stanley Johnson looks like a solid value. Um, I'd be fine using Anthony Tolliver or Reggie Bullock as flyers, but my major focus would be uh, between Drummond, Johnson, and Jackson. Um, Not a ton of interest in Luke Kennard. Not getting the minutes any longer. Now for the Celtics, uh, they are hosting the Raptors. There's not a line right now. I think it'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of a 210 total um, and, you know, a point or two in either direction in terms of uh, who will be the favorite. Not anything that's changing my, my day up very much. Uh, Boston and Toronto, both really difficult defensive matchups. Uh, if you want to roll out Terry Rozier or Al Horford, those are guys that I'd be okay having a little bit of, um, maybe a little bit of Greg Monroe, but... I don't really love much of Boston tonight. They're not a place that I really want to look for for anything of value. They don't grade out really well, in my opinion. Um, I think that it's just sort of Rozier and Horford for me. And even at that, uh, I guess I like Horford more than Rozier. He would Horford would be the guy that I would want to have a piece of from Boston. But it's just a tough game. It's a great basketball game, though. For the Raptors... Uh, again, a little bit of a difficult defensive matchup. Boston's solid, but you know you, there is some value at shooting guard and small forward um, in the past against Boston. Uh, we've got Demar at 7,900, 7,400 on DK. I like him a lot. Uh, I think that I will be building a lot around Demar at shooting guard. I like him a little bit more than I like Lowry at point guard tonight. Um, after that, it's just sort of, you know, you could use a Baca, Van Vliet, or CJ Miles as filler. Miles very much just filler in a GPP, but um, I would I don't want to go too much further down from DeRozan. Um, it would probably be DeRozan and Van Vliet for me as guys that I'd be mildly interested in. Van Vliet at 5000 there's some upside in that price. Uh, but, yeah, I prefer DeMar to Kyle by, like, a, a decent amount. Uh, for the Heat, Heat are hosting the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, 109.5 implied total for the Heat. Uh, that is third. They are 7.5 point favorites at home. Um, great matchup. The uh, best they can have at point guard and center. Second best at power forward. We've got Dragic at 7,200 on FanDuel. Uh, 7,100 on DK. Um, he's somebody that I'm definitely going to be looking at. Uh, Brooklyn's been really bad against point guards. Uh, Josh Richardson is up to 6,600 on FanDuel now, so I'm, I'm significantly less interested in him at that price point. Um, I don't have any problem with little bits of Tyler Johnson, James Johnson, Olenek, or Whiteside all on FanDuel. Um, I don't really like James Johnson, Olenek, or Whiteside on DK. No, Whiteside's okay on DK, but... Johnson and Kelly Olenek's prices haven't come back down from all those non-Whiteside minutes, so I don't really see those guys as playable tonight. Uh, Tyler Johnson's pretty good as an option on DK, but I just want to get a bunch of parts of Miami. Miami still has something to play for. Brooklyn, you know, while they're not tanking, they're also just not very good, and uh, 
that's something you want to capitalize on, particularly on a short slate like this. For Brooklyn, uh, Nets 102 implied total, which is ninth, seven and a half point underdogs in Miami. Um, first up is Rondé Hollis Jefferson, 7,200 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. Um, that's a fine price. I don't, I don't love the idea of grabbing, you know, small forward, power forward types against the, uh, the Heat. But he's been right around that 30-point mark or into the 40s uh, in the past two-week stretch. So no problems having any Rondé Hollis Jefferson. But, you know, be prepared that it might not be the best night for him. Other than that, I mean, like, nothing looks good tonight. It's just a really crappy slate. Um, you know, I don't, I, I don't have a problem having a tiny bit of Damari Carroll. I don't really love having much of D'Angelo Russell, even though he's coming off a 44-point game. I just don't like running against the Heat. Um, I wouldn't expect a lot of Brooklyn guys to pop up in my optimizer when we run it. Then finally, we've got the Kings hosting the Warriors. Uh, Warriors 8.5-point favorites in Sacramento. 101.25 implied total for the Kings, which is dead last. Um... And they've spread out their minutes to a point where it's now very difficult to figure out what they're doing. Uh, I'm all over Bogdan. One of the better plays, again, on the board at shooting guard. 4400 on FanDuel is just an amazing price. Uh, definitely something you want to look at. Um, I don't really have any interest in grabbing Buddy Heald on either site. Um, I'd be okay with a little bit of Scal on FanDuel. Uh, maybe a little bit of Frank Mason on, Fran on FanDuel. Um, but the pricing for the Kings guys on DK is, is pretty rough. Um, my focus entirely would be grabbing guys on FanDuel, and even that is a bit of a stretch. I know I'm rushing through this video, but there's uh, not a lot to talk about on a slate like this. It's, it's really pointing you in the direction of playing baseball. Let's put it that way. Um... For the Warriors, we should expect to see Draymond, Durant, and Clay on the floor tonight. Um, you can run Quinn Cook out there at 6,200, but uh, be prepared. He's going to be losing a lot of touches now if Clay's coming back. Um, I think that Draymond looks fine at 8,600 on FanDuel. At 9,100, that is not a price tag I want to pay on DraftKings. Um, Durant, 10,9 on FanDuel, 10,9 on DK. I, I could see him being incredibly solid here. Um, Durant is someone that I'd be interested in paying up for. And then you've got Clay, 6,700 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. While the grades themselves probably don't look that great and he's still working his way back, um, I'd be willing to take a flyer on Clay uh, just because it's the Kings. This should be about as good of a, an easy of a transition as someone can have. So I think it'll be an interesting perspective to throw these uh, projections into uh, Fantasy Cruncher and see what gets spit out. I'm going to look only at the uh, the main slate for, um, for both sites. So let's switch that to just this little three-game slate. Nothing of note. Really? Every time I tell myself I need to change this uh, copy-paste macro so that uh, it collapses fields, and every day I just don't do it, and I get irritated, and like, over and over again. If you guys didn't see it by now, um, there is a an MLB video out breaking down the entire slate, very slim similar to what I'm doing here for the NBA video, so I highly recommend taking a look at that. Um, Really proud of some of the NBA or the MLB content that we've been putting out so far. Alrighty, randomness is set. Three game slate. Let's see what we get. There's gonna be some weird shit here. A lot of Bogdan, a lot of Durant, a lot of DeRozan, a lot of Horford. Okay, so let's start. We'll grab a Bogdan. We'll grab a Durant. Actually, we'll skip a Durant. We'll grab a DeRozan. We'll grab Horford. And we'll see what balances out from there. Little bits of all the heat dudes. 
down to 18. Let's filter it down one more step. Let's grab Drogic and we'll see what we have from here. That's probably too many kings. That's probably too many raptors. Ooh, I don't love that just because of Olenek and James Johnson. And a GPP I'd entertain. I think I'd like this one the most. Drogic, Mason, DeRozan, Bogdan, Durant, Jason Tatum, and then Olenek, Johnson, and Horford. If I'm going to have to take three guys against Brooklyn, you know, I'm okay with it. Um, it's going to be tough to find lineups you like. That's why I'm really happy to play 150 lines. Uh, but that would be my favorite of everything I've seen so far. Let's take a look at DraftKings because it's probably going to look significantly different. I finally got a second monitor hooked up, so now I'm looking over here and looking at uh, everything else. So much better. Still working over the office, turning it into a little bit cleaner of a studio. Now that uh, this is my J-O-B. Oh, I'm sad that basketball is slowly ending because March has been very, very good to me and I really don't want the season to go away. All right, DraftKings, what do you got for me? Show me something good. Show me something interesting. We'll bump up that randomness. Let it rip. God, those are some tiny ass projected totals. Alrighty. So, Horford for sure, DeRozan for sure. What I'm going to do is hop over to the DraftKings section, see what we've got. Um, we're going to need to grab, uh, I was going to say we need to grab Kylo Quinn, but that's uh, the wrong slate. So, I think that Rondé Hollis Jefferson needs to be grabbed there. Um,. Let me filter out all these teams that don't play. That would be what Charlotte, Detroit, the Knicks. What's the other game? What's the other team? Charlotte, Detroit, Knicks. Oh, Wizards. Make it a little bit easier for myself to look at my own rankings. Uh, looks like we need to grab Terry Rozier on DK. Um, Maybe Tyler Johnson, is he around? There we go. That's eight lineups. Let's figure out which is the best here. Um, I think this would be a, a spot that I would look first. Drogic, Rogier, DeRozan, Horford, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, Tyler Johnson, Bogdan, D'Angelo. That seems to be the one I would like the most. Man, it's going to be tricky. That's a crappy slate. Play baseball. Go watch my video on baseball. Read our articles on hitters and pitchers and stacks. And play baseball instead of basketball tonight. These games suck. Don't bother. It's not worth it. That's all I got for you guys. It's, it's depressing. I like good basketball slates, but this is not the best Saturday for NBA basketball. Go Make sure you watch the Celtics-Raptors game. That should be good. But Wizards Hornets sucks. Knicks Pistons sucks. Heat, Nets, Kings, Warriors, it's all garbage. Uh, none of it matters. Best of luck to you guys, though, tonight. If you like this video, I would appreciate a like. Uh, I'd love for you guys to subscribe to this channel. Uh, making this grow is now something that is very, very important to me. Um, please go to awesomeo.com. Check out all of the content that we have. As of right now, it is all still free. You'll get articles on... Uh, slam dunk plays straight from Alex himself. We've got hitters and pitchers and stacks articles for basketball. Uh, similar articles for the NHL from Jake. Um, we're just we're churning out a lot of content, guys, and it's only going to get bigger. So get in on the ground floor. It's a great place to be. Uh, if you need anything from me, feel free to hit me up either in the comments section here or at my Twitter. Twitter is easier, uh, at Josh Engelman. Um, you'll find me there regularly. And if you need anything else, um, you can contact me at my email address, josh at awesomeo.com. Um, I'm happy to help you guys out in any way that I can. Hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I'll talk to you guys again in the morning. Bye-bye.